Yeah, yeah. Hi, good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you all for coming once more to um, another one of our sessions on uh, fluctuations. Today, we're supposed to look at implementing fluctuations in construction contracts, continuation from where we left off. But I'd like to just kind of recap on some of the things that we discussed um, a month ago on the 17th February and look at where we are. So the major causes of fluctuations, um, shortages of materials, shortage in availability of skilled labor, hoarding of materials, increase in fuel price, fluctuations in currency rates or the black market, project delays, price gouging, rising interest rates, credit squeeze and quota impositions. And you can see from that list that some of those things are already happening locally. The risk imposed by fluctuations without mechanisms in place, well, smaller construction firms will be forced out of business. Numerous projects will be canceled, delayed, or put on hold midway through the procurement process. A great deal of uncertainty will be created in the construction industry for many owners as the bid prices will waver from, from budgets. A slew of claims on the basis that the contract is impossible or frustrated. Fluctuations are a real threat to construction programs if the impact reaches 8 to 12% per annum or more. And the current risk allocations for fluctuations are being imposed upon those who are least able to absorb its increased costs. The contractor strategies used to deal with fluctuations are the use of a high contingency markup to um, the use of a high contingency markup, 12 to 20% on lump sum tenders. Materials hoarding by suppliers causes prices to increase. Free booking of material creates sh shortfall for others. Imposing pre purchase by employer conditions. Transfer of the fluctuation risk onto subcontractors and the usage of substandard materials within the contractor's bid price can lead to building or infrastructure collapse. And that happened at the Dubai municipality in Deira. It was a massive catastrophic collapse of a building. The employer strategies that will be used is to pass on the risk to contractors, redesign of projects, if they come in overpriced, Cost plus contracts are way to go. Put in price, price fluctuation clauses. That's one of the things we're discussing. Increase in mobilization payments and pre purchases and direct supply. So, what do we know about fluctuations? Well, price fluctuation is not unknown or an unmanageable risk. It is an economic risk to be addressed. A fluctuation mechanism is necessary in uncertain volatile markets where there is likely to be unprecedented fluctuation in price arising. And the lack of fluctuation provisions in a contract demonstrate that contractors are not as effective as expected due to they will hoard, bulk buy, pre-book materials during a during periods of volatility. And where the employer passes on the risk of fluctuations to the contractor, this too is ineffective as contractors would build a high contingency of a price premium. So the benefits of using a fluctuation clause or fluctuation mechanisms, but it will reduce price inflation of contract prices and the elimination of the contingency cover price premiums. It will avert construction-related disputes due to 
negotiation, renegotiation, suspension, termination, and even abandonment of contracts. Tenders will be at market prices and contractors will quote in the most competitive rates without having to forecast an uncertain future price. It will give rise to better workmanship and improved value. And both parties will share the risk of escalation prices. It provides a useful financial management tool for construction projects. So in order for the implementation of a fluctuation clause to be effective, a cost consultant or quantity surveyor services will be required by the employer to advise on price, database, and or indices. What are some of the implementation mechanisms? We have what's called the invoice method. And this method requires the use of an invoice or receipt or certification from a named supplier to substantiate changes in price of materials from time to time when the contract was signed to the time of the actual purchase. Another method is called the index method. Any increases in the contract price based upon escalation is documented by reference to a designated pricing index for the particular commodity with the ability to adjust the index price for local fluctuation and conditions or combination of both the invoice and index method. And this method establishes what is called a certified bid cost of identified materials based on either its current name supplier price or an index price listing. A set percentage is agreed by the parties for adjustment. And if the material fluctuates from the certified bid cost, the contract price is equally adjusted up or down accordingly based on the named supplier price or the index price listing movement. Which brings us to the end of this brief summary and to continue our discussions that we've had or we've been having since last week and, and any questions raised. So just to understand that um, I want to go back to and ask Mike to address um, if he's found anything related to um, the two tender system that we discussed last month. Um, I know it's not an easy thing to do, but Mike, can you update us on, on where you are with that? Mike, we're not hearing you. You need to unmute. Hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we could hear you. I got in touch with about four firms and asked them if they, if they knew about this, if they could check their archives and see if they could come up with the, the clauses. Because th these contracts had to be about 1982 in that era. But <clears throat> nobody got back to me. And I, I tried to get everybody to the end. I just have messages asking them to call me. But I got like heart and then it has a library. And Cleve was going to check and see if he could find anything in it, but he hasn't responded to me yet. I called him today and he was out. But I haven't been able to find a hard copy of what we used to use as yet. Right. Well, we could keep following up because I'm sure Cleve probably has something in heart and uh library that we could locate you know um, but we know that, that that system is just two ten two um tender two a, tender b. form of tenders tender a tender b yes 
One is based on a on a on a fixed price. Usually, it was a fluctuating price, and the alternate was a fixed. Right. Because the, the fluctuating one, which was the main one, had to come in with a basic price list and stuff like that. So the tender B was a fixed price, which meant that the basic price list was was needed. So they take the risk of the fl yeah. fluctuation through a lump sum, lump sum. fixed price. Um, Billy Rupchan, you were to look at a standard um, fluctuation clause that you had uh, recently done for a client. Yeah, which I which I sent to you, Derek. You you sent it to me. Let me see if I can can get it to to um, sharing and see if I can pull up that. Right. That's it, really? Yeah, so if I could probably right, take you through it, yeah. yeah. Take us through, through oh, that, I, I can scroll. Yeah, uh, how it's worded, we have worded it worded it in a way that it can be used regardless of the form of contract that you are using. So what we are telling them is that notwithstanding anything to the contrary in the tender documents, the following provisions would apply in the price of material resources. So you see, we are allowing limited fluctuation in steel rebar, structural steel and cement only. And we have provided the tenders with a template um, the tender is indicated in the attached table, the prices on which his tender is computed for these items. In the table, the tender is to show the prices prevailing at the time of tender. And he should also say which supply is provided in the quotation. And we have defined the date of tender in, for this purpose to mean five days before the established date for receipt of tenders. Where the actual price, so this is the fluctuations here now. So where the price of the resource increased beyond 10% from the tender prices, the contract price would be adjusted to reflect the actual increased cost and good beyond the 10%. And uh, we made provisions there for making interim disbursements at the time of issuing interim payment certificates to cater for the fluctuations that's computed. For the avoidance of any doubt, there will be no corresponding additions for overheads on property. So it is the actual cost incurred by the contract. Increase. And uh, save for the aforementioned, all other terms and conditions, as now obtained in the tender document, would prevail. So just spelling it out that that's it. Yeah? Acknowledge I, well. I, I had issued it as an addendum. So, so you could disregard the arm. Um, you could disregard that last that part. paragraph. And one goes straight to your right. typical so that's table. Table. Very simple. These are the items we would be allowing the fluctuations on. Let me know who your supplier is and what the rate is. So when, when we look at the actual prices prevailing at the time of purchasing, we would want to see it from the same supplier. Great. So I, I will send that out to, to Ricardo so that anybody can access this clause, you know, um, if they want to make recommendations to the employers. All right, thank you very much, Willie. Good, good. And let's see, Dennis, Dennis, are you here? Dennis Joseph? Yes, yes. Third, third one, yes, which is the, um, a, a significant mobilization um, payment, if you could, um, you know,
You, you, you with us, Dennis? Yes, I'm here. I was trying to understand what it is you, you know, you, you wanted. I had emailed you with respect to the query. Yes, I know. But um, at the last meeting, you mentioned that, that, that you had a client and you had, what was recommended was a larger um, advance payment for mobilization to procure materials that would be subject to fluctuations. No, I think you probably misunderstood me. I, I see. I, I don't think I said that I had a client with that. I, I probably would have mentioned that it is one of the means that one could use to, to, to reduce the risk, you know, by, by the inclusion of a uh, higher than normal um, mobilization payment, you know, and that has to be the, the understanding for the particular mobilization payment. But I, it's not that I, um, I had anything grafted or anything like that, um, Derek. Sorry. No problem. Derek, Thanks, uh, Derek. Derek. Sorry about that. I Derek, thought it was Derek. a system. <clears throat> Derek, sorry. I think yeah. I would have reported something like that before. And it is an actual occurrence on one of my projects where we made a payment, a prepayment to the, the contractor for the purchase of all of the rebound structural steel on the project so that he can hold the price and we hedge against further increases. So it's, it's similar to Dennis's suggestion, but we actually put it in practice. We, 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 didn't, we didn't really do it as an, an additional mobilization payment, if you want to call it. We made a prepayment towards the purchase. And um, the parties relied on trust. So we did not have to get a mobilization bond increased or anything, you know. We went on, on trust in that instance. And the materials are procured and they are being fabricated and so on now. And we are no longer threatened by any fluctuations in the price of those resources. Great, well, th thanks. Thank you for that, Dennis, and um, really clarifying that. Um, mm -hmm. Before you go on, I would just yeah. like to comment on the, um, on the submission by Willie. Yes. Right? I know the intention is, is to try to make it as simple as possible and for it to be used in you know, any contract situation. But I would be very wary of attempting to amend a contract, you know, just by the use of, um, you know, a bulletin like that. I, I think it should be specific to the particular clause that you're attempting to, to, to change. And I think reference should be made to that particular clause. So, so yes, what he has done there is, is good and, and is workable, but I think it, it has to be relative to the particular form of contract that you're dealing with. And it should make reference to the particular clause that you're changing. Understood. So for, for new contracts, you will just delete in the particular conditions and replace it with the sort of clause wording that Willie has proposed. Yes. 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 Rather than just have it as a, as a, as a separate uh, standalone bulletin you know? yeah, but he was just showing you what, what they had done on, on an existing contract, but, but making it clear that we can use that um, where, we, where we have new contracts and we can adjust the particular clause to deal with the level of fluctuations that you need on the contract. You know, so, so um, and, and that is, is an invoice, what is called the invoice-based method. Suppose we one can do the same if one had a price index, most of the 
what the price index is at the time of tender. You know, if you were using the, the, the index method and, and, and put a formula to calculate fluctuations. Yeah, but this method to me is, is far simpler, you know, and the, and the, the average Joe like me, you know, would be able to operate that as Very a good. having to, to work out indices and whatnot. And, and, you know, you must have some sort of database from which to work to be able to, to utilize that particular method. I was merely um, uh, thinking, Dennis, about our various clients now and what their preferences would be. So um, we as advisors would probably have to put probably one or two mechanisms to them in, a, in making advice rather than they feel that they're being boxed in to, to choosing a particular system. Un unless the industry makes a decision to go um, with a particular mechanism, which brings us to the point that once we see that we have uh, a system that has, is proposed simple, that really has proposed, which everybody seems to, to understand, that how, where do we go, where do we go um, with this to get it implemented in um, construction contracts. Certainly for our private clients is not a problem, but for the largest employer in the country, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, which has about 80% of the construction works in the industry, how do we, where, how do we go about um, getting them to understand the implementation or how to implement this. And I don't know if we have anybody who is from the employer organizations here or represent employer organizations that can um, assist. My, my understanding is that all of the Chinese contracts have a fluctuating clause. Serious? That's you. Okay. That's good to know. So the Chinese have it, but our locals don't at the moment. You see, we don't have the billion dollar contracts. We have the hundred million. <laughs> the Chinese have the one and two billion contracts. And they're not going in without for that risk. And and, and are they using a, a similar clause to what we have here, Mike? No, I think. It's, most of these things are partially designed and built, I like think. I haven't seen the clause, but somebody who is in there has told me definitely that they have fluctuation clauses. They are low ones for fluctuations, so they're not losing. So we might be just knocking on an open door then? Correct. So, well, remember what they tried to do at HDC, where they were even going to play the VAT and all of those things on time. They were giving them these preferences, which none of our contractors had. And it's when JCC made a lot of noise, in a week it had disappeared. So maybe we, we need to get the JCC to make a lot of noise to start putting fluctuation clauses in, in all contracts. I would support, Derek, um, the method that Willie is suggesting, but just possibly increasing the number of items, you know, to, um, to cover some more of the, of, of the basic um, materials that would be used in, in, in our construction, like, like blocks and um, cement, probably even ready-mixed concrete. Right, so we, we, you're suggesting that we Add to that clause a very detailed um, basic price list. Yes. yes. Does anybody have a, have a, a detailed basic price list? 
that they're currently using? Well, Derek, I think, you know, an assessment has to be made, you know, what is the likelihood of uh, a material resource increasing by more than 10% from what prevails now? Now, in the case of concrete and cement, we know that these are the regular increases. And yes. once those prices go, that holds again for two years, you know? So one has to really make that judgment. Roofing sheets, I could probably see might run away because that's steel base. But we also got to be mindful that the increases we are seeing here now is not based on an increase in demand for the, for the resource. It is based on a shortage of supply. And the, the shortage of supply is brought about by the COVID. And uh, once the COVID comes under control and people go back out to work and manufacturing resumes and so on, the supply will be made up and, and the fluctuations will no longer be. As a matter of fact, the, the prices will fluctuate downwards back to where they, they were, in my assessment of the, the market. I was looking at a wider thing, really, of the uncertainty of the of economies world, worldwide that would give rise to, to other impacts that would give rise to material price increases. Mm. And, and, and we don't know what those are because each country is implementing their own. But even based, even based on the, the, the sort of convulsions that have been taking place, with cement, it is, it is, it is possible that, um, you know, within the, 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 the medium term that prices for all cement and cement based products could change and could change significantly. If there's a change with respect to transport you know, which is which is which is also a likelihood based on 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 prices for fuel and stuff like that. Then, you know, things could change. And freight. And freight as well. You know. And and we've seen the imposition of quotas on 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 um, cement in order for the government to protect um, the. In bleeding out of foreign currency, what stops them from um, putting further quotas in place on other materials or goods and services? You know, if they want to protect the foreign reserves. So, so, so that is why I'm saying we need fluctuation clauses because we have no idea what's going to come soon. We might just be seeing the tip of the iceberg with, with what is happening. And, and, and as Willie say, at the moment, that is a shortage of supply issue. But what, 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 he, what, what else I'm seeing is that there are other economic circumstances that is likely to cause prices overall. You know, um, somebody mentioned lift last time, 30%. Somebody mentioned um, lumber was to increase. Somebody had mentioned there was a huge rise in electrical materials because those are alloys, you know. And so we don't know the full impact of what, um, of what percentage that will have on the price of the uh, construction project. We, are, we, we as, as cost consultants have to project, um, put budgets in place. Are we prepared to take that kind of risk too in terms of your professional liability? But since the last meeting, does anybody know of any increases of other materials in the last four weeks that they could tell us? Mm -hmm. 
Or is it that nobody has any work, so they have no increases to deal with? That might be more like it. <laughs> but they're going to... Yes, Colin. Uh, it's Tony Selwyn, Tony. Oh, uh, Selwyn, yes. All right. Well, I normally work, well, I work with you, the partner. Right. right. And, uh, well, so far, well, it's just still, so far, an increase. Um, but the information really uh, provided will come in handy you now. Because we have a, a situation in uh, like so many community centers, uh, they got the contract, but so many instances the, the fluctuation clause now uh, was not in it. That is one, um, and so many contractors are already uh, uh, claiming for increase now. So, so what we did is just tell them um, the price increase, try and get the information, uh, record it. And let somebody from inside sign it, make sure, you know, for the time being. But we, we have not implemented, like, uh, the, the, something that for them to sign, you know, or, or maintain properly. Now. So what really just provided will come in very handy, you know, so far, yeah. And, and, and the thing is that those contractors that you have, they're small contractors and they can hardly carry that kind of law, sir. Correct, correct. They have some, some of them really, really balling, you know, for instance, the uh, structural steel, like they know, let me see, they know, start, they start to work now, and all of a sudden, the price increase. So what we do, what we do, guys tell them to do is um, guard the information, uh, but eventually we have to do something to, because they could, they could crash now. If you know, um, if you are assistant uh, as, a, as, as, as the employer, uh, so that is a situation we have been. But Selwyn, you, uh, am I muted? So when you are in a, 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 a position there, what you do will dictate what the government does. Correct. It, it would be a government stand. Correct, correct. And, and, and it would setting the precedent for all state projects. Yeah. So when see what I might have to do is uh, probably talk to the division manager. Yeah, you, see you if we could... Um, you got to tread carefully there. Make sure that yeah. it's consistent with what government policy would be. Correct. Well, you, well, something other we done, eh? because I know plenty of contractors and start to uh, cry out, eh? you, you know, the price increase, and most of the time, as you can use survey, and a project can use survey for, like, for community centers, and, you know, the projects, and I will tell them, um, you know, let's monitor the course and write it down, wherever, eh? but no matter what, I know it will come to haunt us, eh? when it comes to final account and things like that, eh? Just, just make sure, Selwyn, you use the word without prejudice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> recalling recalling Dennis's, Dennis's position, the last time I attended, when Dennis, Dennis was saying, so what, what, you have a contract? Are you not going to respect the contract? <laughs> remember, yes. remember that? <laughs> so you got to trade a little carefully. Yeah, yeah. But I was still mentioning to the, uh, the Benjamin manager, because I say, Plenty, it, 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 you know, especially according to how the contract, like we said, the the now we have mobilization, and they might no shock the sellers yet. So in some instances, they, they know like they really have money, you know, to to, to purchase quickness. So you might have to do something for them to get money, at least to buy the material quickness. And Selwyn, going forward, Selwyn, when they approach you for the fluctuations. Mm -hmm. Oh, are they what how are they doing it? Are they making a, a submission, a contractual submission? Are they making a bag? How is it being done? Well, some of them um begging for it and what uh, they check the monitoring it, they, they start to uh, send information uh, like showing increase and things like that. Um but we make no commitment that we'll pay them as yet for anything like that. Now. But contractually we know you know the, uh, the price will increase now. But I like the part where you say, you know, at least, yeah, like how you have it, 10%, like if it go over 10%, you have to have something mechanism to, to, to at least like a control our course if you had to pay them. Well, it is a way of sharing the risk. Yeah. yeah. Selwyn, so, so from what I know about your organization, it's not so much how you think or feel, you know. Yeah. You have a legal team where everything goes to. So unless you could go and convince the legal officers to start putting fluctuation clauses in the con construction contracts yeah, for right. all new contracts right. and, 
and to deal and to deal with a, a with a sort of addendum mm -hmm. like what know. Willie has done for an existing contract. You you, you know you going you spin in top and mud because mm -hmm. the, your legal people not easy. You you project managers can say wherever you want is when it goes there. You know that is where. Um, they stand up and you find out that hey pal, any everything you just tell them fellas and them down on the site ain't happening. Correct. Correct this. So you yeah. need to start talking to your legal officers who, who are involved in drawing up these contracts. That's very important. It's true. You really have to set up a kind of some kind of mechanism in place now. As you all say, you know the material, other things could rise now. So we got to put something in place. That I think is, is, you know, could be seen as an unreasonable suggestion for somebody to make their organization, their higher ups in their organization. I think as, as was said earlier, we need to take a position on this as QS, QSs, as, as advisors, probably even at the level of the JCC, and to make that recommendation to these bodies. So you are, you are, you are uh, outlining what I was thinking, that we need to take the lead anyway, right? Um, rather than, 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 than procrastinate, we need to set up a committee that could go and meet with the UDCOTs, with the NIPDEX, with the um, NIDCO, with the Ministry of Finance, you know, to to deal, to, to outline to them exactly what we have in these um, slides, yes, and to, to, to propose to them a fluctuation clause. Yeah, I think that is the way to go, you know, yeah. to expect an employee to, to, to try to make that, um, to get that change in his organization. I, I think it might be expecting too much from that. And, and I, I'm, I'm supporting you on that because I know he's legal people. Yeah. You know. So, um, can we think, can we, can we have volunteers for a committee? to further develop this. And um, Nigel Ramsey, I'm not seeing him here. He's our JCC man. You know, we will have to have him make um, overtures at JCC, you know, level. So if I could have some volunteers for this committee, but how, how many people run on this committee? Three, five? Well, Jerry, given that I already did a skeletal, um, you know, I, I know you'd be looking for my name Thank there. You. <laughs> Not that I want. Thank you. Yes, really. Yes. Right. So, Willie Ropchan, Mike Dennis. Yeah, I will keep Willie company. Yes, yeah, Dennis. Right. Always, always <laughs> welcome, my brother. Always. <laughs> That is right. Um, well, I I, I um, volunteer myself, you know. I help if you need help. And Mike Sams. Any anybody else that that, that should be okay. So. What, what a, yes, hello? Yeah, yeah I, I don't mind joining the committee also. Sorry about that. Marlon Jackson. All right. All right, great. Well, we have we have five there, so that we sh that should be enough. No, the Raj channel is up. Um the Raj. The Raj. Um, no, 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 it, it's okay. I was gonna click before Marlon came on, so it, it's it's okay if, if they have enough. Okay. But if they need help, I'm willing. No problem, Deiraj. Um, your contribution have been valuable too, as well. You know, 
All right, we put the rudge in. Right? So that um, in the event that somebody, you know, we, we'll all go as a as a team, but if, if um, anybody drops out, at least we'll have numbers, you know. All right? So what I will do is that um, I need to get everybody's email who's on this committee. And um, I will work with Ricardo to and and with Nigel, yes, to um, organize meetings with the, with well, maybe the first one we should go to is what Unicot. I know, Papa. Uh, yeah, yeah. Since they have existing them first. existing issues, Unicot, yes. You yeah, record. Once I'm organized, I can probably talk to the division manager or something. Right. Well, well, it will be a formal letter that will come from the institute. Yeah. Okay. You know. No problem. Right? Uh, we'll work through the institute, you know, and um, ask them for a meeting. Um, anybody um, has any objections if they? will not do face-to-face -face that we do it Zoom? Or you feel it should be face-to-face? -face? First meeting. Pardon? First meeting should be face. First meeting should be face-to-face. -face. Yeah. With mask. <laughs> yeah, we go look like the bandits, boy, really. <laughs> All right, so face-to-face, -face, first meeting. Beauty cut first. Just bat in order. Um, mit Nitko. These, since these are the, the, the implementing yeah. agencies and third NIPDEC. Ministry of Finance. NIPDEC. 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 NIPDEC? Yeah. NIPDEC has so much work? Yeah. All right, NIPDEC. NIPDEC. Um, pure. Pardon? They are doing pure, NIPDEC. NIPDEC and pure. No, pure. No, NIPDEC is doing the pure. Oh, they're doing the pure program. Yeah. All right. NIPDEC and then Ministry of Fi Minister of Finance or Ministry of Finance. Yes. Let's start with the companies first. Let's start with the companies start first. Start with the companies first. And then that's what I said for the, yeah. the, the, the Ministry of Finance. All right, so that's the batting order for now. All right. And will the JCC will fall in between here or, you know, um, and I'll provide Nigel with the relevant information for him to take to the JCC for, at their next meeting. Any, anybody have, um, I see Deiraj have his hand raised again. Yeah, um, what I was thinking, um, just to be, just so to, to, to encourage um, these entities to be open to, and are willing to meet, not to encourage them to meet, is people like Selwyn, um, who from the inside probably need to raise that as an issue, um, you know, we, we, with, with their legal team. So it, it says, well, we, we this is a liability we have, maybe not a, well, not financial, but in terms of delivery of the project. So it'll, it'll, it'll sort of encourage everybody to, to, to be open to meeting, so put some urgency to it. Yeah, we, we understand. We're expecting that, that that would happen on the in, inside, but without yeah. putting the person in too much of an embarrassing position, we will do a formal approach. Right, okay. Okay, agreed. Formal approach. So even, even if they can be made, they can be sensitized, you know, mm -hmm of the issues, but we will make a formal approach to these organizations for a meeting to, to deal with the issue of fluctuations, you know, in construction contracts. And then we can have the GCC uh, do its own um, overtures, you know, um, since, since they have the contractors association with them. Agreed. 
Okay, but we, we as quantity surveyors, being the construction cost consultants and the leaders in the industry and the experts in respect of this, need to take the lead, you know, right? Um, rather than, than um, like I say, to see foot around the issue, we need to start moving on it as quickly as possible because it's a real possibility that these fluctuations are going to um, rate ugly head in the industry. You know, especially where where you have a shortage of um, foreign currency and so forth. So with that, if we have nothing else from anybody, I will thank you all for this opportunity to once again present on the issue of fluctuations and I, Ricardo, will do his needful and send you all your, um, your CPD letters. And we will move this forward. And um, if there's a need to come back to us, to, to you all, you know, after, after these meetings, in terms of to see, to, to report on the level of success or non-success, we will do so. Thank you all very much. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good evening. Thanks again, Derek. Thank and you. And Willie. Yes.